David Berman was a Jewish-American organized crime figure active in Sioux City, Iowa, the Twin Cities, and the Las Vegas Strip. He was a casino gambling pioneer in Las Vegas, where he was a partner with mobster Bugsy Siegel at the Flamingo Hotel. Berman died in 1957 during surgery. Early life Berman was born into a Jewish family in Odessa, Ukraine. His father was a former rabbinical student who played the violin. When he was a young child, his father departed for America and settled in Ashley, North Dakota, on land provided by Baron Maurice de Hirsch's Jewish Colonization Association. Berman then sent for his wife and children. David's mother was reportedly horrified after getting off the train and realizing that they had exchanged the relative warmth of Odessa for the icy cold of the Great Plains. Gangster After failing on the land, the Bermans moved to Sioux City, Iowa, where David began his criminal career. At the age of 13, he ran a crew of teenage thugs committing petty extortions and eventually a string of illegal moonshine distilleries during the Prohibition era. He then went on to supplement his earnings by also leading an armed robbery crew. In 1927, Berman was allegedly recruited from the Midwest by the New York City-based Bugs and Meyer mob in order to kidnap wealthy criminals for ransom. However, after Berman and Joe Marcus kidnapping of Brooklyn real estate baron and bootlegger Abraham Charlin, both kidnappers were surprised by the NYPD while waiting for the $20,000 ransom payment in Central Park. Marcus drew his sidearm and was shot dead. When offered a deal after his arrest and return for testifying against those who had hired him, meaning Meyer Lansky and Bugsy Siegel, Berman famously quipped, hell, the worst I can get is life. For his role in solving the Charlene kidnapping, NYPD Detective John Cordes became the only police officer in that department's history to be awarded a second Medal of Honor. Berman was convicted of felonious assault and sentenced to 12 years in Sing Sing Prison. After being paroled after seven and a half years and first receiving the blessing of Mo Sedway and Meyer Lansky, Berman moved to Minneapolis, where he operated a major illegal gambling ring in rivalry with the AZ Syndicate led by fellow Jewish gangsters Yidi Bloom and Kid Can and the Irish mob led by Tommy Banks. One of Berman's most feared enforcers during his Twin Cities years was Israel Alderman, a notoriously homicidal Jewish hitman from North Minneapolis, who was nicknamed Ice Pick Willie. Davy's brother, Chicky Berman, also worked for him. He was nicknamed Davy the Jew and led his organization first from the Radisson Hotel and then from the Dickman Luxury Hotel. An FBI report says of Berman during this era, inasmuch as he had tasted confinement for a considerable length of time, he is a most dangerous type of law violator, due to the great price he is willing to pay in order to avoid another state of confinement has a great ability to control of his emotions and were prior to being sent away to Sing Sing prison for a lengthy term he was considered tough, subsequent to his release he is considered vicious. As a short choppy type of speech, was not too well educated but disguised this fact with little conversation. According to his daughter Susan's memoir Easy Street, Davy Berman ordered the murder of two Italian-American brothers who had been sent by Chicago outfit acting boss Al Capone to organize a mafia crime family in the Twin Cities. The Chicago Wise Guys murders allegedly resulted in a sit-down between Capone and Berman's protectors in the Genovese crime family of New York City. Capone demanded Berman's assassination and the New York mobsters spoke in Berman's defense. At the end of the sit-down, Capone grudgingly backed down, but vowed to kill Berman if he ever came to Chicago. According to Twin Cities crime historian Paul Maccabee, FBI files reveal that David Berman contributed very heavily to Marvin L. Klein's mayoral campaign under the understanding that, if Klein won the election, Berman would take over illegal gambling in Minneapolis. Therefore, during Klein's 1941 to 1945 term as mayor, Berman briefly eclipsed his rivals and became the leader of the Minneapolis criminal underworld. According to Susan Berman, when Klein was the mayor, Tommy Banks and Kid Can had to work for her father. According to both Neil Carlin and his daughter, Susan, David Berman also used his crew to intimidate and terrorize the Silver Shirts, an anti-Semitic militia financed by Nazi Germany. Berman once personally physically assaulted Silver Shirt leader William Dudley Pelly and warned his followers to keep their anti-Semitic rhetoric out of Minneapolis, or else. World War II Susan Berman later learned that the Nuremberg Laws and the Holocaust enraged her father so intensely that he enlisted in the Canadian Army. The Holocaust was the genocide of European Jews during World War II. Between 1941 and 1945, 
Nazi Germany and its collaborators systematically murdered some 6 million Jews across German-occupied Europe, around two-thirds of Europe's Jewish population. The murders were carried out primarily through mass shootings and poison gas in extermination camps, chiefly Auschwitz-Birkenau, Treblinka, Belzec, Sobibor, and Chelmno in occupied Poland. Berman had, in fact, previously been turned away by the United States military for being a convicted felon. In addition, the attack on Pearl Harbor had not yet brought the United States into World War II. The attack on Pearl Harbor was a surprise military strike by the Imperial Japanese Navy Air Service upon the United States against the U.S. naval base at Pearl Harbor in Honolulu, Hawaii, just before 8 a.m. on Sunday, December 7, 1941. The United States was a neutral country at the time, the attack led to its formal entry into World War II on the side of the Allies the next day. Berman and his Minnesota friend Nathan Gilowich both fought in the European theater as soldiers with the 18th Armored Car Regiment, 12th Manitoba Dragoons, 2 Canadian Corps, which first experienced combat during the Normandy landings. Berman was well-liked, and his fellow soldiers did not know that he was a major figure in Jewish-American organized crime. After being severely wounded by enemy fire, briefly presumed dead, and declared unfit for further active service, Berman returned to the Twin Cities. Las Vegas. The December 1944 issue of the Public Press, edited by a Jewish journalist and Walter Liggett-style anti-corruption and anti-racketeering crusader named Arthur Kasherman, featured the headline Klein administration most corrupt regime in the history of the city. A month later, on the night of January 22, 1945, Kasherman was ambushed after eating dinner with a friend and shot dead on a sidewalk at 15th Street and Chicago Avenue in Minneapolis. Kasherman's murder made the front pages of newspapers across the Twin Cities, but few in Minneapolis were surprised when the police investigation was quickly shut down. Although Kasherman's murder remains unsolved, it ensured the electoral victory and first term of racket-busting Minneapolis Mayor Hubert Humphrey, who is now known to have destroyed Behrman's operations, while leaving those of Tommy Banks and Kid Ken largely unscathed. Berman moved his crew to the Las Vegas Strip and operated there in concert with Genovese family associates Bugsy Siegel, Dutch Goldberg, and Mo Sedway. According to journalists Ed Reed and Ovid DeMaris, Berman was involved in the mob's investigation into Siegel and the missing profits of the Flamingo Hotel and Casino. Both journalists further allege that Berman had talked to Benny a number of times about it, warning him that if the matter was not settled soon he was going to find himself minus a head. 20 minutes after the 1947 assassination of Bugsy Siegel in Beverly Hills, California, Gus Greenbaum, Mo Sedway and David Berman walked into the lobby of the Flamingo and announced that they were in charge. Berman died on the operating table during surgery to remove polyps from his colon on Father's Day, 1957. His daughter, journalist Susan Berman, always maintained that her father died under mysterious circumstances but all indications were that he died of a heart attack during surgery. Family While he lived in Minneapolis, Berman met and married Elizabeth Ewald, a German-American dancer who used the stage name Gladys Evans. The couple's only child was journalist Susan Berman, who was gradually paid a total of $4.3 million by the American Mafia in return for her inherited stake in Las Vegas casinos and other properties. Berman also wrote a memoir about growing up as Twin Cities and Las Vegas mob royalty titled Easy Street, 1981. In it, Berman chronicles her mother Gladys's and her own obliviousness to what went on around them. When they finally became aware of their mafia family, Berman's mother ended up dying in a mental institution and Susan endured a lot of psychotherapy. Berman was murdered at her home by her close friend Robert Durst, and her body discovered on Christmas Eve Day 2000. Susan Berman was murdered execution style with a 9mm handgun inside her rented home in the Los Angeles suburb of Benedict Canyon on December 23, 2000. On September 17, 2021, a Los Angeles County jury convicted real estate billionaire Robert Durst of Berman's first-degree murder. Durst was also convicted of many additional special circumstance charges, which caused him to receive a sentence of life imprisonment without parole. Bugsy Siegel Benjamin Bugsy Siegel, February 28, 1906 to June 20, 1947, was an American mobster who was a driving force behind the development of the Las Vegas Strip. Siegel was influential within the Jewish mob, along with his childhood friend and fellow gangster Meyer Lansky, 
and he also held significant influence within the Italian-American Mafia and the largely Italian-Jewish National Crime Syndicate. <laughs>